Morning, everyone. Why won't we all prepare our hearts and our soul as we hear from the Lord and as we sing some songs of worship before our God? darkest hour You're the God who hears me When I'm crying out for help When my fate is shaking When I'm all struck down You're the God who sees me You're the God who saves I will bless Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times. In your lavish kindness. I've been washed by grace You're the God who loves me I can't keep it to myself I want to shout your story I want to sing your praise You're the God who is mighty You set my heart ablaze Oh, bless you, Lord I will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, bless you, Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, and now when you give and take. face today for you are strong to save and I will bless the Lord at all times I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord at all times oh I, I will bless the Lord I will bless the face the day for you are strong to say and I will bless the Lord at all times and when you give and take I'll stand on what you say and I will bless the Lord at all times and I can face the day for you are strong to save, and I will bless the Lord at all times. And when you give and take, I'll stand on what you say, and I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. Lord, we want to receive what you want to say to us today. Lord, even as we talk about the church, may we have an understanding of your heart, of how you've designed it, how you want us to enjoy it, and how you want us, Lord, to appreciate and live out the truth 
of how the church should be today. Lord, we receive your word and we pray, Lord, that you would enlighten us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. Today, we'll talk about something that's very important to all of us. The church, our local church. In Acts 2, verse 42 to 47, it describes to us the life that was in the local church and how it affected the community. Let me read to you Acts 2, 42. It says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and dis distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. See, what a picture of how God designed the church. You see, the church has been misrepresented in many ways today. You know, when you talk about the church, many people think of the church as an event place. Oh, that's where we go. That's where we had our wedding. This is where we go every Sunday. And then we just rent the place. It's an event place. Or a church is where my favorite preacher, pastor, preaches. You know, I really follow pastor like this or pastor like that. And that for them is church. Where the pastor goes, I go. Or it's a place where we attend church, we hear sermons, we sing, then we do a little holy kiss lang after, and then we go home. Many people, they think that's church. And we miss the whole point of why God, in the first place, put church in our lives. Many of the definition of the church that we know now is very transactional in nature. Yet, it is the opposite of how the church should be. The Bible says in Acts 2, 42 to 47, there were things that was pinpointed there. Number one was that they were devoted. Devoted to the Word. There was devotion. When you talk about devotion, you talk about love, passion. I'm not talking about the romantic kind of love, huh? but the devotion, the commitment to the Word of God. I think that's one great distinction of what the church is. You can be devoted to groups and communities, but there's nothing like spiritual family. A spiritual family, the distinction is that we are devoted to the Word of God. It is the Word of God or the Scripture that shapes us. It guides us. Our value system is based on the Word of God. What we exude, what we invite, what we embody to the world is based on the Word of God. The New Testament church was very devoted to the Word. They knew it is the Word that shapes culture and not the other way around. Are you devoted to the Word? Are you part of the local church where you're saying, I want to study the Scripture with my fellow brothers and sisters. We will be devoted to the Word. We'll discuss the Sunday preachings. We'll discuss whatever Bible studies that we're doing. And we will walk this out together. They were devoted to the Word of God. The second devotion that they had was they were devoted to fellowship or what we call shared lives. Fellowship is not just like we call uh, churches and put fellowship in the end. Fellowship means we come together and share our lives to each other. Many of what we learn, what we read, what we study on Sunday or in our Bible studies is flesh out in the everyday. The church reflects the belief that we hold dear. I'll give you an example. You know, when you talk about agape, or unconditional love. There's no words to explain unconditional love. When you talk about covenant, you know, you might say, oh, covenant is such a deep word. You know, sometimes we get goosebumps studying covenant theologically. But you know what? What would change all of that is if covenant is fleshed out in the relationships you have. When unconditional love and forgiveness is something that you experience because you are part of a local church that is not perfect like our church. We're devoted not just to study the Word, but we're devoted to fellowship. Fellowship is not only during good times. It's not only during birthday parties or weddings. It's actually 
very important, especially when times are dark, when times are hard. That's where the devoted to the fellowship comes out. Are you devoted to the Word? Are you devoted to fellowship? Next is one of my favorite description of the early church and what the church should be. They were devoted to breaking bread or shared meals, right? One of my favorite picture of the church is shared meals on the table. You check my Facebook, my Instagram, and you check a lot of our people's Instagram. Almost the picture is not during times of worship where they're praying or singing songs. Picture of the church will always be in a restaurant, in a dining table at home, or in a picnic. When us coming together, sharing a meal, there is no better way to do life together than in a table. My favorite furniture at home is our dining table. You know, I love our dining table. We, we, somebody blessed us with an eight-sitting dining table. So this is quite big. And we knew that this was from the Lord because we made the decision that our home will be open, where relationships would be built, memories created, and that there will be conversations, laughter, tears, prayers, studying the scripture in our dining table. That's why it's my favorite furniture at home. This is where a lot of the impartation, the shared lives, the crying moments happen in our dining table. It wasn't in the bedroom. It wasn't in the bathroom. It was in our dining table over shared meals. When Jesus enters a house, what would Jesus do? He would always sit on tables. Restoration, redemption, happens on tables. If, if, if you look at it, right? In, in, in the Lord's Prayer, uh, David says, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. There was the presence of the table with a lot of food and in the presence of the enemies, restoration either of enemies to become friends or redemption that those who have bashed me and hurt me, now I'm being redeemed by God in the presence of a feast on the table. What an amazing picture of shared meals and fellowship. The breaking of the bread. The resurrection of Jesus Christ makes us enjoy the dining table. It makes us look at this furniture in a very different way. You see, being the church is not just a Sunday thing. It's an everyday thing. And we all know that growing up. That the church is not a building, it's a people that God has placed in your life. And the way, especially for us as Filipinos and Asians, the best way to build relationship is how? Through shared meals. Diba? Kaya nga, bahati natin sa isa't isa, kumain ka na, kain na. Tara, kain na. Kahit wala ka namang isi-share na meal sa kanila, <laughs> yan din ang bahati mo sa kanila, diba? That's the power of a shared meal. You know, Peter was restored after a shared meal. Yung sinabi, Peter, do you love me? It was after breakfast. Jesus made sure Peter had a full uh, meal before even rebuking him and restoring him back. You know, I, I reflect on uh, a lot of parties that I've been to. I'm in the table with many people of different backgrounds and beliefs. I've been on a table with an atheist, somebody who would think of uh, gender issues differently. Some are Buddhist, some are of different religious backgrounds. Some are people I don't agree with, some with a different political leaning. But on a table during a wedding or a birthday or whatever feast we are in, on that table, we all share a meal together. It's always fun. I always have new friends after a party when we are assigned to a table where we don't know people, we get to meet people who are not the same as us. You see, that's a picture of a church. Uh, there was a podcast that I was a guest of, and this was talking about, and there were three groups, uh, Catholic, one uh, religious group that, uh, that, that was not aligned with us doctrinally, and I was representing the evangelicals. And the conversation uh, during that episode was, is Jesus enough? You know, it was a good question. It made me think. 
how come there are so many divisions in the world today? Now, I'm not going to go through the intricate details of theology and what they believe in, but I want us to think about this question. Is Jesus enough? That got me thinking for weeks. How come we've created walls rather than share meals with human beings? Is Jesus not enough? If I have Jesus, can I open that table with Jesus, with Jesus in my heart, with Christ in me, and be the church to a world that needs to meet my Jesus? With all our differences, with all our differing opinions, political parties, beliefs about certain things in life, when Jesus is in the table, everybody is invited. That's a good picture of the church, right? If you look at Jesus, who did he share meals with? Tax collectors, prostitutes, sinners like you and me in the table. We bring Jesus to the table. As the church, we are a representation of Christ to the world. This should be something that we do with so much ease. Imagine you're just going to eat with Christ in you and share a meal with people, even people you don't agree with. This is the picture of the church. As we devote in the word, in the fellowship, in the breaking of bread, in prayer in our local church, we now bring that same spirit and culture Jesus exemplified to the world. I, I, I want to end with this uh, story that we had during our 10-day trip, trip. I brought some of our friends and our church leaders with us and we went to the nation of Kazakhstan where everybody was not predominantly Christian. They were of a different belief system. And as we were going there, we tried the old route of cold calls and evangelism to strangers. And a lot of them stared at us saying, you guys are weird. We're not going to listen. We're not even going to whatever event you are organizing. They felt like, oh, that's too much. It's too awkward to even come there as we represent Christ to a nation who had no clue on who Jesus is. Yet there was something that we did during one of our morning devotions. If you've been to attend days, you'll have a morning devotion. We were praying. Many of us were frustrated. It's not working. And we're on our third day. If this is going to happen for the next seven more days, I don't know how we'll be able to bring about spiritual conversations to a nation that doesn't want to talk about Christ. And then we made a decision that morning. And I believe it was a Holy Spirit-inspired breakfast for the team. We decided after prayer, here's what we'll do. We will do what we love to do and invite local people to do what we're doing. You know what that was? Shared meals. We love eating. We love going out. You know, as Filipinos, we hang out two, three hours on the dining table and we laugh. Laughter was such a key thing during our experience as a shared meal. What we did in the Philippines, we started doing there on the dining table. When we started doing that, that was the third day. Up to the last day, many of the locals who were, you know, keeping their distance away from us, started joining our meals. Our lunch, our merienda, and our dinner was full of local Kazakhs sharing a meal with us. Even our tour guide got to know Christ and entered into a spiritual conversation with us. How? Through a shared meal. Here, her observation during one of those early days, I think it was on the fifth day, how come you guys are so happy? How come you share food? This is such a wonderful experience. Our tour guide invited her best friend to join us Instead of us touring Kazakhstan, they toured now the culture that we have as a church, the power of shared meals. We were able to talk about politics, Jesus, religion, and all other things because of that shared meal. That's the power of the church. And you know what bless us more? is us, God breaking our mindset during that trip that the way for us to share our faith and be the church to each other and to the world is just bringing Jesus to that table 
and saying, Jesus, when Jesus is here, life is here. That's how the church should be. As we're devoted to the word, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. I want to end with this. And this was a song. Okay, I'm not going to sing this morning, right? But this is a song that I heard when I was young and kind of shaped my theology when it comes to church. And I hope this song also would make you think of how you see church. And the song is, you know, this is a small stanza. The song goes, you can't go to church, as some people say, the common terminology we use every day. You can go to a building, that is something you can do, but you can't go to church because the church is you. You and me, we are the church. And let's follow the pattern of Acts 2, verse 42 to 47. Let's be a devoted church who will bring people to the table to meet and fellowship with our loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay, before you have your breakfast, let's take this time to worship the Lord together. to say and I will bless the Lord at all times and when you give and take I'll stand on what you say and I will bless the Lord at all times and I can face the day for you are strong to say and I will bless the Lord at all times And when you give and take I'll stand on what you say And I will bless the Lord at all times I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord at all times I will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord at all times. I hope you were able to enjoy the Word today and let the Word of God minister to all of us. I want to pray a prayer of benediction for everyone. Father, we thank you because you have called us to be the church. It's not a building, it's us. The deeply Christ-centered relational connections that we have within our spiritual family. I pray, Lord, that this year we will make an effort to build deep, to make a commitment, a devotion, to be part of a local church. Lord, to get to know the people around us, to get to even know our pastor, to be able, Lord, to serve within that local church. Lord, I know that you have called us and designed us to be part of one because we cannot live this faith alone. Lord, may we experience the power of shared meals, not just with family, but with spiritual family, that we'll have lifelong, deeply connected, Christ-centered friendships this year. May you bless your church, bless each and every one of us as we go out there and be the church to the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.